Hey, it's Josh Vergara from Android Authority. What's going on, everybody? And today we're going to revisit the Oppo N1. Now this is the large phone from Oppo with a rotating camera that did receive some good reviews from us, primarily because it does manage to be a very good smartphone with a little bit of uniqueness built in. However, what has really distinguished this phone in recent weeks is the fact that it's supposed to be the Cyanogenmon phone. Now that is not supposed to be the official name of this particular phone, but it does come with Cyanogenmod and you are able to install it once the files are available at Oppo's website. A limited edition of this phone will be made available with Cyanogenmod built in. Now again, it's a limited edition, so the rest of you who get an N1 will just have to install it yourself. And about a week ago, you saw me put up a picture showing that I did exactly that. Now, why did this particular video take a little bit of time to come out? Well, primarily that is because the Cyanogen mod that is found on this phone that I am about to show you and ostensibly the ones you're going to see across the internet at the moment are likely not going to be the final versions. There's still an update that has to be released for that version of Cyanogen mod that will make it the final version. And once it does, it will be made available for all of your N1 goodness. So if you are already familiar with Cyanogen mod, then you probably have a lot of the elements already down. Let's go ahead and unlock it. And what we have here is a pretty typical Android lock screen and CyanogenMod allows you to customize the lock screen with a bunch of different shortcuts in the ring right here. Then that was always a very welcome addition. And also of course the widgets right on top. So if we just unlock the phone, it really just, just look like a stock Android build. And that is essentially what CyanogenMod goes for is just keeping the very, very pure version of Android, but also adding in a lot more customizability. Like for example, it, well, first we have the folders here, the, the home screens, I only use one home screen actually, and the app drawer. One thing that you are able to customize and is very welcome, at least for me, is the, uh, the capacitive keys at the bottom can be customized to have different functions. So if, for example, the menu button over here, you don't want it to be for menu, you want it to be for the recent apps, which is a typical function for stock Android, then you can always make that be the case. So that is a very welcome addition there. And you're also able to customize what holding them does. So holding the home button, of course, goes to Google now for me as usual is the case that if you bring down two fingers, then you get the uh, power widgets. However, if you go from the very right, you still get the power widget also. The two finger swipe is of course what you get in pretty much every version of Android that takes advantage of the notification shade. However, on uh, the Obo N1 with Cyanogen mod, you can also swipe down from the right. Now here's where things kind of get interesting. Of course, the Oppo N1 comes with a few particular functions or features that the operating system should be able to take advantage of. And one of them is, of course, this rotating camera. But there is also the O-Touch area on the back. Now, this is just a swiping area that allows you to get a few functions, a few different tasks done, mostly just swiping and tapping for particular things uh, that you wouldn't be able to get done because the screen is huge enough already. It just is supposed to add to comfort. Now, whether or not this little area is good for you is pretty much dependent on whether or not it's comfortable. For me, I'm able to swipe back and forth pretty easily on here. But on Cyanogen Mod, I wasn't sure if the O-Touch area was being taken advantage of. So I searched around for a little while and it, <laughs> it, took, a, it took a little bit of searching, but someone finally pointed me to an area of the settings that I almost never go to, and that's language and input. Now, of course, the reason why is because, well, if it's in English, that's pretty much all I need to know, so I never go here. Nonetheless, if you go to language and input and you come all the way down to the bottom, there it is, the O-Touch settings. O-Touch settings can be enabled. You could do double tap to capture inside of the camera, which I'll show you in a bit, and you can long press to launch the camera. I don't like using that because there are times when my finger just stays on the back and I'm unable to um, stop it from loading the camera. So let's head back here and I'll just go open the app drawer. And there you can see the actual O-Touch is working beautifully, working just fine. And let's go ahead and take a quick self-portrait in the camera. It can be a little finicky after all, uh, you have to just get the tap just right. But if I go like that, there you go. Go ahead and double tap in order to take pictures. So selfies on the no, uh, on the N1 with Cyanogen Mod are just about as easy as they were when you're in the color OS. And then of course the other addition that is available in the Oppo N1 is its little buddy that it comes bundled with and that is the O-Click. The O-Click, this nice little looking 
just module here that connects to your phone via Bluetooth uh, was available for the N1 in the Color OS, and it has a lot of very, very obvious functions, just finding your phone or finding the O-click and the camera shutter release using just the button that's on here. Well, when it comes to CyanogenMod, that option is also found in the settings under the button menu. And after you get it set up, you have a remote camera shutter button available for the CyanogenMod camera. And I can just show you that right now. There's the O click in my hand and boom. Uh, the last thing, at least in terms of CyanogenMod taking advantage of N1 functionality, is when it comes to gestures. Now in the Color OS, uh, in my original review for the N1, one of my favorite parts about it was that gesture area. You swipe down from the top left of the screen and you will get a canvas in which you can program and draw any number of gestures made for opening various apps. However, when it comes to CyanogenMod on the Oppo N1, we don't necessarily have a gesture area or a canvas and able to draw, but a few gestures that are programmed in can be accessed via when the phone is locked. That's right, when you lock the phone, the screen still takes presses. Let's say I wanted to unlock my phone without having to reach for the button, just double tap on the screen and there is our lock screen, just go right in. After that, there are two more gestures that you can use. Uh, if you remember drawing a circle in Color OS in the canvas allowed you to get to the camera, well, if I just draw a circle right here on the screen, it goes straight into the camera. So that's really nice, a nice easy way to get to the camera. And then finally, for all of you out there who get lost in the dark a lot, drawing a V will turn on the torch. And there it is. So that is your look at Saturn Mod on the Oppo N1. Now, I call it a feature focus primarily because being able to install this OS on the N1 to me is a great feature. After all, the N1 comes built with its own recovery built in, and that allows you to install not just the CM ROM, but also any other certified ROM that Oppo deems okay to use with the N1. Uh, of course, Cyanogen Mod is the main one. So you're able to just jump into the phone, have the ROM already uh, situated inside of the file system of your phone, and when you boot into the recovery by holding the down button, as you power on the phone, you can select the ROM and it gets installed. It allows you to intersperse between the different kinds of ROMs if you so please, and that's something that I might do from time to time because I am actually a fan of the Color OS. That being said though, CyanogenMod is a very accessible ROM and a lot of you out there might install it on your N1s just because CyanogenMod is a very easy operating system to use. Now as a final reiteration, I will say that the Oppo N1 comes in two different flavors, but the flavor that comes with CyanogenMod built in will be a limited edition that is yet to be released. And when that does come out, you might want to jump on it as fast as possible because like I said, it's a limited edition. However, rest assured that installing CyanogenMod on the N1 is about as easy as it can get when it comes to Rooting. Uh, you don't even have to root the phone, you just have to open up the recovery because all of that is already done for you. Don't worry, when Sanogen Mod is officially out in its final version for the N1, I will show you exactly how to do it. So as always, thank you very much for watching, and this was your future focus on the Oppo N1, dealing with the Cyanogen Mod install and what it can do. Stay tuned to Android Authority for all of the best coverage. We have reviews and our comparisons, weekly shows, and our event coverage. Remember, CES is coming up pretty soon. We also just passed the 500,000 mark, and I'm gonna keep telling you guys thank you via the video that we put out, just showing our sincerest gratitude. The entire team has a great message for you guys, so make sure you check out that video. So drop us a like on our videos. Don't forget to subscribe if you haven't already and follow us at social me uh, in social media. You can find my handles down below that subscribe button. So keep it tuned to Android Authority because we're your source for all things Android.